A study by the University of Phoenix revealed that nearly three quarters of respondents have been a part of a dysfunctional team. So there's always room for improvement. Pivot in your confidence, career, and compensation with the 5-Minute Career Hack Podcast every Monday and Thursday. Now, get ready as we pour out your 5-Minute Career Hack for the week. So now that we've talked about the three main things that people desire being on a team, let's talk about what you're going to do to be the best communicator, to have your actions be supportive of the team, and lastly, be consistent with the communication and those behaviors and actions when you show up daily. Number one, you're going to decide today who you are and who you want to be as it relates to your communication style. There are so many different styles of communication, and I'll let you take some time to figure that out for yourself, but chances are you already know. But you need to decide which one best fits how you want to show up to work every day. And then I want you to remind yourself that this is how I want to communicate on a regular basis with my team. And don't be afraid to share that this is how you want to show up on a consistent and regular basis with no surprises. Number two you are going to support and say and do all the things that you want done for you. Just like the old saying goes, do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. I know it's a statement that you've heard probably since you were a kid, but you cannot expect anyone else to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. So if you want people to celebrate your wins, small and large, you need to be celebrating other people If you want people to recognize you for the work that you've done as a part of a project, you need to recognize others, including your boss, for the work they've done on projects. If you want people to greet you a certain way face to face or via email, you need to greet them a certain way. You want people to check on you to make sure you're feeling great today, that your emotional well-being is at a high level to check on you and your family within your own personal boundaries then you need to do the same thing for others within their personal boundaries. Remember, the principle of reciprocity is not just a moral guideline. It has tangible benefits. When team members mimic positive behavior, trust goes through the roof. And with increased trust, Gallup found that teams see a 12% boost in productivity and a staggering 50% decrease in employee turnover. And for all my HR leaders out there, you know, turnover costs money. Being a part of a team, you can complain, you can get frustrated, you cannot like how people behave. The truth is, we're often quick to spot flaws in others, yet we overlook our own areas of improvement. If you think you've mastered being a team player, think again. A study by the University of Phoenix revealed that nearly three quarters of respondents have been a part of a dysfunctional team. So there's always room for improvement. And I'm going to challenge you to first figure out how you're behaving on that team. And if you're honest with yourself, I always know when you're on a team, you can get better. When you're in relationship with others, you can always get better. And if you think you've arrived and you think you've done everything that you can actually do in that relationship, that relationship has begun the deterioration process the process of dying a slow death or a quick death, depending upon how the dynamics of the relationship have been going. The American Management Association, they found that organizations with employees who mostly feel included and valued see 83% increase in their ability to innovate and a 73% increase in their ability to respond to changing customer needs. If you lead a team you understand a 73% increase in their ability to respond to changing customer needs is half of your battle because sometimes the external factors coming in are the things that you have to manage the most. I just gave you a cheat code. All my leaders out there, I hope you caught it. So take this time, as my big sister says, to have a mirror moment. Have a mirror moment with yourself and ask yourself, Have I absolutely supported and behaved and done unto others as I internally in my heart and all the soft spaces of my soul and my emotions, have I done the same for others? As always, take some time to reflect. And until next time, I love you. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed doing it for you. 
However, it doesn't have to end there. Come on over to our Facebook group community right now for free. You're going to get exclusive content that we weren't able to include in this episode as well as past episodes. We've got challenges. We've got research. We've got lives. You name it all for you in bite-sized chunks so that you can continue this development journey. Go ahead, click the link right now in the description show notes, and we'll see you there.